Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning to the citizens of Douglas County and good morning to the Board of Commissioners. Board of Commissioners, we will call this May 18, uh, 2020 meet, uh, work session to order. And uh, so glad and privileged that you all are all here this morning. Uh, before I start, I can't see everybody's, uh, everybody's faces at once. So what I'm going to do is call in. If you're here, just please just answer with present. Ramona Jackson Jones, present. Kelly Robinson. Present. Uh, Commissioner Kelly Robinson, I apologize. Commissioner Ann Guider. Present. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. And Commissioner Jarenia Carton. Present. All right, thank you. So we all are here and thank you so uh, much. What I wanna do this morning, we, uh, Board of Commissioners last Thursday, we had six exciting events occur here in Douglas County. It was quite uh, a joyous moment here. Uh, and also I uh, would like to thank the citizens first and foremost for appro approving Explost in 2016. We had five groundbreakings last Thursday and one ribbon cutting. Uh, and it certainly is a true testament of the progress here in Douglas County. I would like to extend a great appreciation to our chairman of the Parks and Recreation Committee, uh, Commissioner Henry Mitchell, who led this amazing effort, along with uh, our director, Gary Dukes. Uh, we've asked uh, Terry uh, Gable today, who is our SLOSH manager, uh, to uh, project manager, and also uh, David Good, who's our communications director to uh, come in and just speak and share uh, to, with the public uh, how exciting these projects are and just give us an update. But before I do that, I'm gonna yield to our chairman of the Parks and Recreation Committee and allow him, if he would, say a few words. And then also, I, I certainly don't want to miss our vice chairman of the Parks and Recreation Committee, which is uh, uh, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Thank you so much. I yield to you, Commissioner Mitchell, to allow you to move forward. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair, and, and it'll be brief. And only thing, and, and thank you for allowing us to at least talk about some things that happened this past Thursday, this uh, marathon uh, that we did this past Thursday, five uh, groundbreakings to include a uh, ribbon cutting at the fire station that ended up with fire station number five on Chapel Hill. So I'm gonna let, as you stated, Terry and David did just kind of debrief kind of how it went. Uh, all the groundbreakers, cause we, I mean, we started at the Senior Citizen Center. Uh, we ended up over at the tennis courts at Deer Lake and Boundary Waters and Fair Play and Bill Arp. So it was a quite a, an event and it was a, a, a nice long tour. And thank you for those of you who were able to kind of show up and be a part of these, uh, this ceremonial uh, groundbreaking and ribbon cutting. So I'm gonna first turn it over to uh, Terry and uh, David Good so they can kind of just kind of sort of brief everybody kind of where we are with the projects, the groundbreakings, and uh, just update the citizens of Douglas County on this plot, on these plot projects. Uh, sure, uh, good morning, everybody. This is Terry. Good um, yes, uh, just to kind of recap last Thursday, it was a great day. Uh, it was just a good opportunity to um, to showcase the, uh, the current uh, parks projects that we have underway. Uh, and also the, uh, obviously the, uh, countywide digital radio system. Uh, we started the day uh, last Thursday morning at the Senior Center. Um, it is well under construction. Uh, it is on schedule right now. Everything is going very well with it. Uh, but just to kind of recap the history of that building, if you remember, we, uh, uh, in the early design stages of that project, we did uh, several public uh, information meetings for the public. Um, the commissioners took comments. David Good was obviously part of that. Um, just wanting to make sure that we got in the building uh, the things that the citizens wanted. Uh, and I think we've ended up with a great senior center. Uh, senior, uh, center. Um, if you remember, we've, um, we've incorporated some pickleball courts. Um, I think we're going to de define this senior center as, a, as also as an activity center. Uh, we'll have the, uh, the pickleball courts and also an indoor pool. Uh, along with a multi-purpose uh, program room, uh, exercise room. Uh, so it, it covers a lot of gamuts for the seniors and I think it's gonna be a great addition. Um, another great thing about the project, it is on schedule. And when we put the bid out um, earlier, uh, or towards the end of last year and bids came in, we had some good bids and we were um, actually under what we had budgeted for it, which was great news when you're trying to run them a SPLOS program, uh, the total construction cost came in 
uh, from that contract is Headley Construction around $4.2 million, and that's just the construction. So uh, great news there, but um, commissioners, just please, uh, if you want to uh, stop and talk about a particular project, uh, let me know. If not, I'll just kind of go through them. Um, yes, just, just go right. Okay. Um, from there, we went over to uh, Deer Lake Park Tennis Courts. Um, that project is also well underway. It got started in March, so it's it's on schedule. Uh, it would uh, it'll be should it'll be completed uh, this early fall. Um, it's being built by Integrated Construction. Uh, the uh, the construction bid for that project came in just right at one million dollars. We have had some issues uh, with with rock, but we knew it was there, uh, and we we planned for it as best we could, but. Uh, as far as the the schedule on the project has not slowed us down it uh, uh, that much really uh, it's still on schedule uh, so we're uh, we're just we're about 30 percent complete with it if you were to go by there now you could see the platform uh, the sub base for the uh, tennis courts and um, and we now have the uh, pavilion going up with the bathroom so we we uh, spent a few minutes there at the, uh, the new uh, tennis courts, and then we went down to the bigger project down at Boundary Waters, uh, the new uh, multi-purpose rec center, and just again back up with that project uh, early in the design stages as we did the senior center. Uh, is you know, both of them are critical projects in, in the SPLOS program. We had several um, citizens information meetings, uh, taking comments uh, from everyone and incorporating everything. And from Mr. Dukes, uh, everything in that building we felt like was going to be a great asset to, to the county. So, but that project is is well underway. It also started in March. Um, if you can, if you remember, we're doing um, one gymnasium with two full size regulation basketball courts. I guess you consider that two gymnasiums, but uh, uh, that's the highlight of the the rec center. We'll obviously have a multi purpose rec center there. Um, also, it'll be a, uh, a raised track above the both gyms that you can, uh, during the winter months, you can also uh, do laps if you need to, and there'll be an exercise room there. So uh, that project also, the good news with that one is, um, we just, uh, when we put it out for bid, uh, contractors were hungry, and, we, and the, the bid came in under our budget. So uh, great news there. The bid was right at $7 million. And, um, and is again just helping us out overall with the budget uh, but that project is well underway uh, this week we're finally getting uh, uh, getting out of the ground with it uh, obviously everybody knows with the, with the wet winter we've had um, it was a little slow down there and uh, that project was a little bit uh, more complex with the, the subgrade we had to bring in dirt on that project which with a wet subgrade it slowed us down we had to make sure everything was stable before we we started coming up with it and we're at that point now uh, we're ready to start this week. We're finally starting uh, some uh, puddings and the slab. So uh, that was well underway. The, again, we had the groundbreaking there um, as well as the other two locations. And then from there, we, um, we went over to um, the concession buildings, which was Fair Play Park, the uh, south side off of 166, uh, the county. And um, this project is joined up with another concession building um, that's up at Bill Art. And so the, the, uh, the groundbreakings went to Fair Play and then we moved up to, uh, to Bill Art. But they were letting one contract and was prime construction uh, is a contract on them. They're well underway uh, with both of these concession buildings and uh, everything is going, going good at this point. Uh, the 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 bid on those on both concession buildings was around about 1.2 million dollars. Um, they've got a completion date on them of approximately four months, so they'll be uh, unless we hit some some issues that slows the schedule down. Uh, those projects will be finished hopefully for early uh, for fall uh, baseball season, and uh, Gary can get those those both those parks back up and running with a new concession building. So uh, that kind of recap the projects. A little bit of history on them, and uh, with that, Commissioner, I'll open it up for comments. Okay, but but let me just do this here. Let me let David Good. I think David Good may have a few comments that he would like to add, 
And uh, just to conclude, the fire station number five, when we do the final wrap up with the, the whole tower, so just FYI. But Gary, yes. I mean, not Gary, I'm sorry, but uh, David Good, any other comments? Did David make it on? Um, he should Maybe. Okay, but that's okay. Okay, so I'll leave the final comments, I guess, with our parks director, uh, who I see now that's on, on the screen with us, uh, Gary Duke. So Gary, do you want to have, you have any other comments you'd like to add to that? We conclude. Well, Terry pretty much covered it, but uh, amazing uh, amenities that will be added to our park digest. And I think uh, the citizens will enjoy uh, these amenities for years to come. Yes, absolutely. And, and thank you guys. And I just want to say to the public, thank you for at least allowing us to, to pull off all these projects and just want to let the public know generally that uh, Douglas County is still doing business. We're in business and we're taking on these projects and we're going to make sure that these projects are all done and, and up and running somewhere about this time next year. You should probably see these guys up and running and we'll have these things on the on the docket at that time. So with that being said, I, will, I don't know, Terrenio, uh, uh, the co-chair, Teresa Hawkin, I, I don't want to leave you out because without her support, <laughs> we wouldn't be where we are today. So, Terrini, I don't know if you have anything you want to add, Commissioner Carthen? No, other than um, we're excited that these projects are going forth, even though we are in the midst of a pandemic. We just want the constituents to know we're still doing our part. The SPLOS is still in effect. We hope people will continue to go out and um, you know, while things are opening back up and continue to contribute, because by them contributing, you allow us to keep continuing down the list of projects. So thank you to Gary and thank you to Terry Gable for all of your hard work and continue on. Got it. And as I stated, last but not least, was the ribbon cutting uh, at fire station number five. And I don't know if Commissioner uh, Ann jones guider would like to add on that ribbon cutting, how well that was went off. And to include that, we're at 97% if I last heard, on the coverage of that particular data. So, Commissioner Geyer, do you want to have anything to add to that? Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, yes, I would just like to say how proud we are that this uh, uh, new radio system is going in. It is not just an operational necessity, but it's a safety issue because of um, in the past, uh, firemen could not talk to people. Their, um, other firemen that outside of building while they were inside a burning building. So it's very important be, because of the safety for the firemen, but it also allows um, our sheriff's office and police to uh, communicate across county lines now in yeah. other jurisdictions. So that is also a, a great asset, but um, the project actually came in under budget mm -hmm. in the amount of about, I think it's right around $800,000 or something to that effect. So this is a, a great asset and uh, I'm just proud and I thank uh, Scott Spencer, Chief Spencer and, and everybody concerned. And um, so we're just, we're just proud of it. And I'll leave it at that, thank you. Thank you, Madam Guider. So with that- Commissioner uh, Mitchell, this is David Good. I just oh. was able to get on. Oh, okay, go right ahead. I don't know if you have any, any closing comments about this marathon groundbreaking <laughs> ribbon cutting that we did this past Thursday. Any other comments you'd like to add? Um, yes, um, I want to go ahead and um, even commend um, all the commissioners for actually being able to come out on that, on that day, that marathon day, um, especially to you, Commissioner Mitchell, for leading the effort and also leading the effort in parks and rec along with Commissioner Carthen and the same for Commissioner um, Guider for leading the effort over in Fire EMS and Commissioner Carthen as the vice to make sure that those projects kept on going forward. I want to also thank the citizens for even putting this out there so we can actually do this SPLOS. The very first one that we did, we started off at 8 o'clock in the morning, did it first at the Senior Center. Um, we could see the building was going up behind us. Right after that, we went down the street, went to uh, Deer Lake Park, and we're seeing where the tennis courts are going. I believe it's either four or five. Here, you can correct me on that one. Um, there's the bathroom that's going to be there along with the pavilion. And so that's going in. And then right after that, we went over there to uh, the multi purpose center at Boundary Waters, made sure that we could see that 
they're getting ready to uh, lay out the footing. Uh, that's where we were able to pick up the ceremonial shovel. So we have our first shovel from the uh, from the splash on that one. We had the plaque earlier from fire station number three, and also the plaque from uh, Boundary Waters concession stands. Next, we went right down the street. It took about 10, 15 minutes to get down to Fair Play all the way out there into District 4, and, we, and that was where we see our local uh, contractor prime actually doing that project as well as Beer Lock, which was our next stop. And that's where we were able to actually see the ball fields and where the bathrooms were going. And then last, we finished out over at the fire station number five, where there's a large tower in the back. And I commend the sheriff's office and, um, and also uh, Chief Spencer for getting the vehicles out there, able to get a great picture, and able to actually see what it is throughout the county that we are able to do with our splash dollars. The only thing that we didn't cover were all the different intersections we also have going on. So I don't want the citizens to think that we're not paying attention to our intersections. But we were able to do groundbreakings at parks and able to do a ribbon cutting at a fire station in order mm -hmm. to talk about the entire system. And the great thing about that system is that, guess what? It actually saves people's lives. People will be able to speak to each other, different jurisdictions when there's a larger fire accident that's on I-20. We no longer have to worry about, hey, we have to switch to this other station or call somebody in order to talk to another county in their jurisdiction, or even just our city of Villarica, our city of, um, of Douglasville. So I want to commend everyone. If you have any questions for me um, here, and a special shout out to both Terry Gable and to the communications staff of Rick, Martin, and TJ for doing yeah, all the behind the scenes things to make sure that this project got going. So I want to make sure be, I'll be remiss if I did not bring that up. So thank you everyone. And thank you commissioners and citizens. You got it. And David, thank you again for all the help that you've done and, and, and special thanks to those that he already mentioned. And I won't go through that list again though, but if you, for those who are watching this via DC 23, you can also do that and you'll see the marathon run ribbon cutting and, and groundbreaking that will be also uh, displayed on DC 23. So with that being said, thank you. And thank you for all the staff and, and the commissioners who was able to make it out. Thank you guys for being a part of this marathon. We got it done. We got the groundbreaking all done. We got the ribbon cuttings all done. And just thank you to the citizens for allowing us to pull off something of this caliber is all because of you. And this is what your splash dollars and this is how it's being spent. Again, thank you, Madam Chair, back to you. And I'll, I'll yield at that moment. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, I would like to recognize <clears throat> Mark Teal. He sits uh, on every one of our committees. And so he steers a lot of this uh, for us too. So I just want to give a shout out to him. Absolutely. Thank nice you. Yes. Thank you so much, Commissioner. All right. Um, what I want to do, uh, uh, Vice Chair Robinson, did you have any comments? I know you, you, you have the largest, this is the largest recreation center in Boundary Waters in the history of Douglas County, so I'm quite sure you have a few words. Vice yeah. Chairman Robinson. I'll be brief. <clears throat> and again, um, I want to thank all my fellow commissioners for showing up last week. Uh, I, I know we were a little rusty, um, obviously because of the pandemic. Um, but it was important that we acknowledge and recognize that this is still the 150th year of Douglas County. And I think it was it was beyond symbolic. Um, and and when, you, when you look back about this administration's and its effort um, and, and how it's produced, I think it was important. It's just not the pump and stance. It's like, OK, what are you doing while you're on watch? and being able to deliver to the public uh, the things that they think are important. Because if you recall, most of these projects came out of what the citizens asked for, like the senior center uh, was something that the citizens asked for, like the tennis center that we promised because of the animal show to that they like, okay, but what about us? Um, you know, there's a lot of ultra player, US, USTA players that, okay, everybody don't play baseball, right? Everybody don't play football. Right, so the tennis and the, obviously the community center was something for other dimensions of our population that needed to be addressed. You know, I and, and the neat thing that I, I really I really enjoyed the most was was I think we hit all four districts, right? And and so I, I was a road dog. I only did it because of Commissioner Mitchell that he only he could have gotten me out for, for that type of road trip. But it, it it's important to say, okay, I got to see all four districts. Very 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 different. And, and, and the commitment to 
ensuring that um, that, that it reflects the expectations of, it, uh, of the respective constituents. You know, I, I and I, I thought about that, that uh, what I want to call the the tower that we ended on. And I'm I'm like, okay, now this saves life. This is a good use of money. This is safety. You know, and and I, I again, so you got to go back to okay. Uh, I know the citizens hold us to certain things. Okay, well, what was the return on capital? How do you evaluate that? How do you return like okay, we gave you empowerment, but compared to what? And if I think about again, I can't let it go because again, we're 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 being judged based on use of money. So if I think about that jail that we 40% overbuilt, that's 40 million dollars that we could have used somewhere else that we could have put that tower in last round that we could have got to share cars this round. But I, I appreciate that it, it's water under the bridge. But I I still have to come back to it that we've done a great job. And I, I agree with Madam Goddard and, and Mark. You created this list. Mark, you sat right next to me. And it was the aggregate before we went to Wall Street. You sat there in that boardroom and you sat up there and you calculated, you spread that thing out and we jumped on that plane. So I, I do, I must give Mark his credit on this. Mm -hmm. That risk is based on what he saw was the need of the county. The people had blessed us the prior fall. But it's important that, okay, compared to what? It's all relative to what? And we've done a wonderful job. I mean, I love this team. Gary, you rock. Thank you, Director Dukes. Um, you guys know how important it is that now, finally, it's not just about the administration's comfort. It's got to be about the citizens because we only exist because of the people. So anyway, I just wanted to make, make that point, Madam Chair, and, and that well done. Uh, I, I, we don't want to lose sight of the importance that it's always about the citizens. I mean, yeah, we can say, look at us, look at us, look at us, look how well we like. No, guys, it, it, you got to always tie back to the citizens. It's about the citizens. So I yield. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. And I just I will close with this statement again. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell, for your uh, very, uh, I should say, your amazing body of work with all these projects. And also, Commissioner Guider, with the 20 year wait on a, on a public uh, safety uh, radio system that we've been waiting a long time. So thank you for pushing this effort through. And thank you, Commissioner Carthen, for serving as Vice, chairman's, uh, vice Chairman on both committees. Also, the largest recreation center in the history of Douglas County, that, that just is it's like a wow moment for um, not only this administration, but for our citizens, This because it's going to give them some more opportunities to enjoy themselves, to remain physically fit and things of that sort. The tennis courts were worn and broken down. I don't know how old they were, but I'm so glad. It was just so, uh, it was a breath of fresh air to see new tennis courts under construction. So, and also the last but not least, our two parks, Bill uh, Arp and Fair Play Parks, was really a, a, a very uh, soothing moment for me when I pulled up because about three months ago I had an opportunity to go out and look at the parks and uh, was very discouraged by what I saw. The concession stands and the press box and the restrooms were deplorable. But I am so proud today that those uh, three items are under construction today. And uh, this is, and uh, this is, I know, it's a proud moment for uh, Commissioner Carthen for the Bill Art Park, and a proud, proud moment for Commissioner Guider for Fair Play. So I want to just close, and, and Mark Teal, of course, you know, you are the wind beneath my wings, and I appreciate everything, and I know the Board of Commissioners do as well. Uh, what you do, you've led this uh, project, and again, David Good, and also. Uh, Mr. Terry Gable and, and Mr. Uh, D David Good have been on the ground. And thank you, David, for acknowledging two things. We want the citizens to realize that we have intersections, and that's, that's a, a, a nice, massive body of work. And thank you, uh, Miguel Valentin. And then we have some sidewalks that are coming. So um, much more to come, citizens, and stay tuned. So thank you again. We're going to move on to our next item. We have, and I want to make uh, just um, certainly circle back and say there will be no public comment this morning due to COVID-19 and the importance of social distancing. This meeting is being held virtually, but I do encourage our citizens to please reach out to your uh, district commissioners and also Mark Till, who's our county administrator, and you can certainly reach out to me as well. And we will respond to you in the most expeditious manner. Thank you so much, uh, citizens, for being patient with us and so understanding that during this COVID-19 uh, episode. Um, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to our approval of the minutes. Please be prepared to, uh, well, first of all, review your minutes and be prepared to approve accordingly tomorrow. And then we're going to move on to our item. Our first item is tab number four. Tab number four is grants. Authorization for the felon, uh, felony drug court to apply for a grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to enhance the adult 
drug court program and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. I believe we have Director Pruitt. Uh, Tim Pruitt, are you on the line? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Uh, this is a Bureau of Justice Assistance grant that Superior Court is entering into. It'll be a three-year grant for a total amount of $499,766. Mm -hmm. Again, that was $499,766. That will be broken up over three years. Those are the federal funds we'll be requesting. There is a local match of $55,555. Easy number to remember, all fives, uh, for each year. But we'll re request that comes out of the date fund. We are only applying for this grant now. We have not been awarded, so we don't need to amend the budget. We just need authorization to uh, seek the money. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you so much. Pretty self-explanatory. We're going to move to tab number five, authorization to approve the um, SFY uh, 2020 Second Amendment Aging uh, Services contract with the Atlanta Region Commission and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Do, um, Dr. Gilchrist, uh, Director of Senior Services. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First, allow me the opportunity to extend a heartfelt thank you to Madam Chair, the Board of Commissioners, and our county administrator for taking the needs of older adults in Douglas County very seriously. Um, I know that the new senior center will prove to be a valuable resource to older adults in the county. And we look forward to the day where we can open the doors and welcome the citizens into the um, new center. So again, thank you very much for that. So this contract, this is the second amendment to our aging um, sub-grant agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission. Um, it's actually an increase in funding, um, not to exceed $619,294.48. So it's an increase from the original agreement that was um, signed earlier in the year. Okay, any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Okay. Thank you so much. Pretty self-explanatory. We're going to move on to the next one, tab number six. Dr. Gilchrist, authorization to accept a grant from the Atlanta Regional Commission in the amount of $4,144.14 to provide operating support for meal delivery to seniors in Douglas County on the Tier 1 uh, meal delivery waiting list to grant permission for senior services to partner with three small locally owned restaurants to help serve those in need from the wait list and to the funds uh, let me see, and wait the list, the wait list using the funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Dr. Gilchrist again. Yes, we're excited about this. Um, the, the total amount of the funding is $4,144.14. We have about 18 um, citizens on our tier one wait list. So in order to meet their needs, um, ARC has provided us um, with this emergency funding. The funding does not have to meet the nutri nutritional requirements. So um, one of the things that um, I wanted to do was to partner with three local restaurants um, in the area to help us meet the needs of those on our tier one wait list. And they will receive meals for 23 days, one meal a day for 23 days. Okay, any questions or comments from the Board of Commissioners? Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Gilchrist, for leading that effort. We appreciate all the great things you're doing in senior services as well. We're going to move on to the business items, tab number seven, authorization to award a bid for fire apparatus, pumper, truck, and additional equipment to Sutphen, uh, Sutphen uh, Manufacturing, not to exceed $550,000 to be funded through the SPLOS funds as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Chief Scott Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, this is uh, one of our splossed items, and we are uh, we bid it out, and uh, the recommendation is to award it to Sufton, and uh, we're excited to uh, get the truck. Okay. Uh, Okay, any questions for Chief Board of Commissioners? All right, sounds 
Good. We're going to move on to tab number eight, Chief. Uh, authorization to accept the recommendation of the Fire and EMS Committee to complete bi-directional antenna for the Sheriff's Department campus and authorize the chairman to sign any related documents pending <coughs> final legal review. Um, Chief Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, th this is a, a little bit technical uh, as far as the new radio system goes, uh, but it has to do with uh, we need to put an antenna at the uh, Sheriff's Department. And uh, we're going to need uh, roughly $20,000 to do that, which will come out of the contingency of the uh, splash money uh, for, for the radio system. There was a, uh, as part of the contract, uh, Motorola had put in several of, uh, or some money to take care of several uh, bi-directional antennas or BDAs. And uh, they've taken care of uh, what the contract required, uh, but we're still a little short. Uh, so that's, that's why this needs to come out of contingency. This will actually be the first change order that the county has made uh, for the radio system contract. So uh, I think that, that bodes well as, as how well the county's managed the money. Yes, okay. Any questions for Chief Spencer? All right, Chief. Uh, thank you so much. Thank I'm you. I'm going to move on. You're welcome. I'm going to move on to tab number nine, authorization That's to review. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm Commission sorry. Guider. I've got a loaner um, computer, and it's not touch tone, and I keep, I mean, touch, so I keep hitting it with my finger, and it's not working. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to uh, commend Chief Spencer for all of his leadership in, in this. This has been a big project. Uh, Chief, tell, tell the citizens about how we are already using this system and uh, the last test that we will have to have. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the comments and uh, but please understand it's not just me. Uh, we've had a team that has been phenomenal. This whole this whole project, uh, director AMA director Mel Holland has been uh, on on the the tip of the spear on this, uh, as well as Deputy Chief Zach Meyer, uh, uh, Chief Connor, and uh, Colonel Oliver from the Sheriff's Department, uh, as well as the Motorola team. Uh, that they've done great things. Greg Whitaker from our 911 center. Uh, it's just, it's just been a great team, and I've just been privileged to work with, with all these folks. Uh, we do have a great team. Uh, the the actual radio system we've been using since March 17th, uh, and it, it's worked very well for us. Uh, we, uh, we've not had any major problems at all. The, uh, they're doing the actual final testing of the system. They've been doing that for the last three weeks. Hopefully they'll finish it up this week, uh, and then we can uh, sign off on uh, the coverage testing and all that. So uh, it's been a great experience. The Motorola team, uh, Jay Nix, Mike Ball, uh, they they've been great to work with. Uh, they they've they've really done uh, done done good by us. Uh, <laughs> and, and I would. Uh, I want to thank uh, Terry and the Splash team as well for, uh, you know, having their input into it as well. Well, as the public can see, there's a lot of people involved in just about all of these projects. And uh, I know y'all meet uh, separately from just the Fire and EMS Committee, but um, and then uh, Commissioner Carson also serves on the Fire and EMS. So we just thank everybody involved for what they did. We and we especially uh, we're we're just proud that Motorola came through with such a great product too. So with that, I yield back. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guider, and thank you so much, uh, Chief Spencer. All the great things that are going on. Uh, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, I heard you. Yes. Uh, so, okay. So, Chief Spencer, can you also update the public kind of exactly roughly when we'll go through our final testing? what that looks like. And uh, I know the numbers are great, 
as to, I don't know exactly where we are with the, the final numbers, but I don't, I don't think we'll get those until we get further down the line with this project. So just an update of how, how much we're being, how much we're covering and how great this system turned out to be, because I know we're beyond 95% if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I think the last report I got, we were at, at uh, 97 point something uh, mm -hmm. percent coverage uh, throughout the county. Uh, and uh, that that's great. Uh, it, it really is. Uh, the uh, the actual contract says that June thirtieth uh, is is when the the final acceptance will be uh, done. Uh, Tusa, our consultant, is in town. That they've been in town the last three weeks, uh, and are are here again today, uh, making making sure that all the contractual agreements are met right and uh th there's a whole lot of technical stuff uh right. i've learned more about radios in the last three years than i ever want to know and, and i'm still really confused on a lot of the stuff <laughs> you've done well you've done well but 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 that's the reason we hired a consultant uh right. too because, because they know this stuff inside and out uh, that w they've been good to work with. They, they've kept us in the loop, uh, told us what we needed to ask, the questions we needed to ask. So uh, all in all, I think uh, Douglas County uh, is very fortunate to have this this system. Uh, we're, uh, we're working really well with the city of Douglasville uh, because they're one of our partners in this. And uh, it's a. Uh, it, it really has been a a good project. And, and finally, and then I'm gonna, you know, I guess pass the torch over to my my colleagues. But tell the general public who we're teamed up with, like Cobb County, and kind of how this whole project kind of came to fruition as to where we are. Because I think teaming up with uh, Cobb County made it one of those um, great situations to be a part of because they, their system and we're adding to their system has took us phenomenally down the road where we can go as far as Alabama all the way east, all the way to Conyers, if need be, when we're dealing with radios. Yes, sir. Uh, Cobb, Cobb County is, is uh, uh, they've got a, a master site, basically, mm -hmm. uh, and they allow other systems to tie into their system. So they did allow, uh, the city of Douglasville was already tied in to Cobb. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we did the, uh, the county system here, uh, we of course tied into Cobb as well. And uh, what Cobb got out of this uh, is they were able to put an antenna on one of our towers mm -hmm. uh, and help some of their coverage problems that they had. Correct. Uh, and we got the benefit of being on the Cobb system uh, and the ability to talk to these other agencies uh, from Bartow County all the way through the Metro. And uh, one of our other partners is the uh, war system out in West Georgia, Carroll County, uh, Coweta, Heard, and uh, we're able to talk to them as well. So it gives us a, a whole lot of flexibility uh, when when we ask somebody to come into our county to help us, or when we go outside of our county to help one of our partners, uh, we're, we're able to communicate, which is huge. Absolutely, absolutely. And the good part is we got plenty of room for growth being a part of the COP system. And, and last but not least, I, I'm gonna yield back into my colleagues, especially Vice Chair Robinson, who always talks about saving lives. This, per, this particular project, it, it, it definitely will help save lives. I mean, not only the general public, but for the safety of our E911 and, and public safety and, and you guys. So, I mean, I just think this was probably a project that was definitely needed and, and was honored to be a part of it and a part of this whole process. So kudos, job well done to all of those that were involved. But as I said, I'll, I'm gonna yield at that point to my vice chair, um, Commissioner Robinson, who, who really speaks about how this thing saves lives. And I, I don't want to steal his thunder, but I'll leave it at that. Thank you again, Chief Spencer. Yes, sir. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, vice Chairman Robinson, do you have any comments? Yeah, I, I got a couple of you don't mind, Madam Chair. Oh, oh, absolutely. Okay, no, no, thank you, um, Madam Chair and, and Chairman of the, uh, um, 
of, of our committees because I, I think all these projects touch to a certain extent. Um, but I want to bring home this whole point about infrastructure. Um, um, our investment in infrastructure has to be distributed. It, it, it cannot be excessively concentrated in any one thing. And you guys have been talking about this radio tower since I came in office. The inability um, and, and Chief, Chief Spencer, Chief Connor, I mean, I, I've heard this narrative for 12 years uh, and how people have to stop at the line. This whole thing about mutual aid. Now, again, this is what you guys do, but I had to learn it. I'm like, well, is that more important than a bigger office? Right? And, and now I come back to the point about uh, optimizing our dollars. We talk about leveraging our dollars, and we also talk about optimizing the dollars. It, it, it's, it's not about equality across, but also it's about a proper equitable distribution. And so I'm listening to this, and I'm, I'm, I'm quiet because I'm like, all right, we found that this is good. You know, I, I, I've seen an accident go down Thornton Road. Guy, the sheriff and them are chasing the guy down the street, and they're trying to make it to the full kind of line. Uh, and the guy didn't quite make it. They slid up under a truck, didn't quite make it. But I, I watched that. I, I watched that. I watched that, the whole thing go down. But but uh, again, there's there's a side to this that we celebrate, but it's important. And I do appreciate what you guys are doing. But this is something that we, again, if we're really committed to safety and lowering the crime, I mean, I, I follow what's called the crime index rate, right? In other words, for, for every dollar that we spend um, in, um, obviously, public safety, it should be able to affect the crime index rate, right? So, I mean, at one point, we spent more money per capita on public safety than any county in this state, but yet we're in, the, like, the bottom 100 as it relates to crime. It wasn't that we weren't committed. You guys out there, you handle your business. It's how we, as the leaders, spent the money to empower you. We didn't give you better cars. We, we didn't give you what you needed. And so finally, we're at a place where I, I, I'm, I'm so encouraged by this leadership that now, now we get it, right? That, 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 that you, you only went with what you, what you could get from us. And again, we're responsible for appropriation. But I, I think you have to acknowledge it, guys. That like this, you, you don't have to, it's not a false humility. Like, no, you guys deserve this. I mean, you got to be able to do your job and you, you're doing a yeoman's job without it for so many years. It's like, come on, guys. But again, so I do appreciate uh, what, you, what you guys, uh, what you do every day. And hopefully this will work. And, and I'll leave you with this. One more time, it's, it's about regionalism. You got to get outside deadless. You got to connect with other systems. It's like what our, 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 our transportation. And I, and I appreciate you guys. You, you get it about the mutual aid. But again, there's a way to invest in a system that cuts across everybody, that spreads the burden across everybody. And, and again, well done um, in how you, whoever designed this, whoever you guys got in room and figured out what the right system that we need, the right design, you guys nailed it. Uh, that makes sense. It wasn't just about Douglas County and what we can do for just us. It's like we're part of a bigger universe. And I, I just, I, I appreciate this, Madam Chair, because again, this, this goes, this is a big deal. And again, as a single most investment, I, I think it's the best thing that we could have ever done. I yield the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Oh, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on. Thank you again, Chief. And uh, we're going to move on to tab number nine, authorization to renew the plan services agreement with Johnson Controls Incorporation uh, for the Boundary Waters Aquatic Center at a cost of $7,573.87 for the term of one year to be effective May 1st, 2020 and continue through April 30, uh, 30 of 2021 as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Director Gary Dukes. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yes, uh, Madam Chair, this is our annual contract with Johnson Controls. They do all the preventive maintenance down at the uh, Boundary Waters uh, Aquatic Center. They take care of the motors and the belts and uh, all the filters and change those quarterly. So uh, that's what we recommend to renew the contract with Johnson Controls. Okay. Any questions from the board or comments? But Commissioner Mitchell, if, if you could, uh, could you uh, speak on the new boiler we have just acquired for the Aquatic Center, if you and uh, Director Dukes, if you chime in on that. Sure, and I'll just say a, a brief remarks to that, uh, that new boiler 
which was desperately needed and and the committee and Gary Dukes and others decided on that's something that was an emergency type of a need and um, we got it in and this particular contract is a part of that whole process as well meaning th this company will actually oversee that actual boiler as well so I think this is a great move but Gary I don't know if you want to speak any other great details about that particular boiler and uh, how this is, will cover that as well. Certainly. Uh, the existing boiler was, from the very beginning, was a little undersized. So we had a problem on real cold days, keeping the water temperature of both pools up to where it should be. Uh, it also, at this point, had outlived its boiler life, if you will. <laughs> so uh, the new boiler uh, will be in place to keep the water temperature where it needs to be and uh, we'll only use the old boiler as a backup. Okay. Commissioner Mitchell, we can't hear you. My apologies. Okay, there you okay thank you. Um, uh, but again, that's the short story on the ball boiler, but the coverage of what this company will end up doing will cover a lot more than just the boiler, but uh, I'm glad to note that the committee to include uh, Commissioner Carson, that we thought the need was to kind of get this done and get this particular item done and push through and, and make sure that the commission received that this was a great need for Parks and Rec. So thank you again, Gary, and I, I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Director Dukes, you have number 10 as well. Authorization to purchase two commercial grade ice machines and two commercial grade refrigerators for the new concession stand buildings at Bill Arp and Fair Play Parks for a total cost of $7,240.12 to be funded through the 2016 SPLOST funds allocated for equipment as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Director Dukes again. Yes, ma'am. These are the ice machines and the commercial refrigerators that will go in the concession stand at both Fair Play and Bill Arp Park. Um, we recommend the low quote of uh, $7,240. Uh, actually, we've saved uh, about $2,000 on, on this quote as compared to the same uh, utilities that went in the Boundary Waters concession stand. So we were pleased with that. Very good. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Commissioner Guy. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Director Dukes, uh, now this is for a refrigerator and it's also for the ice makers, but what about the stoves and any other uh, appliances? Where, where is that funding going to come from? That's always been the responsibility of the associations. We've, they buy their own <laughs> equipment. We only provide the ice machine and the coolers for them. And and they they are aware that they have to come up with the money to pay for the stove? Yes, ma'am. They've always bought their own uh, cooking equipment. Most of them now use grills, outdoor grills. So uh -huh. they don't cook inside except for electrical type plug-in stuff. Okay. So most of it's going to be grilled and, and out, it, not like an oven type thing. No, so. ma'am. It's, it's an outdoor. We, we actually, these concession stands will have an outdoor fenced-in grilling area uh, to protect, uh, you know, hot grills from children and so forth and can only be accessed by the concession stand uh, workers. And uh, do the Coke machines or the drink machines, are they furnished by the uh, beverage company? Usually they are, yes, ma'am. Okay, so they should uh, have turnkey access as soon as this is finished. They can just walk in there and go to work. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, should be able to go as long as they have their grills. Yeah. Well, I saw, uh, um, I think it was at Bell Art the other day, the large board patio. Uh, that's going to be very nice. I believe you're going to have some tables out there too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So we'll have nice. Will it, be shaded? Will, will it be shaded with some kind of a apparatus or a arbor or whatever? 
No, ma'am, we don't we don't have any covering there. Uh, they'll they'll be on their own on that. So if they require tables, outside tables, if they want the ones with the umbrellas and everything, they would pay. They would buy those too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I, I, just so they know, they they may have to uh, fork out some money for this and. And uh, they've uh, lost some revenue because of being shut down because of the COVID virus and everything. So uh, anyway, I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. All right, if there are no other questions. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, previous question, my, my mic was off, Madam Chair, I couldn't get you. Can I go back to the previous question with Gary Dukes and, and Commissioner yeah. Mitchell, please? Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, real quick, guys, I'm going to go back to um, uh, obviously you guys' yeoman effort to, to maintain the Aquatic Center. And, um, and and just for the public's sake, that uh, obviously the Aquatic Center is, is a large facility, requires special maintenance. You mentioned something, Gary, about the boiler was, it's, 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 it's purchase back in the day wasn't quite the right size, and obviously it's run its useful life. Um, I'm, I'm trusting that perhaps the boiler that goes in this senior center is going to be the right design. Unlike children that obviously can adapt to water, I, are, are y'all are you giving assurances that we got this one right? I, I get it. that was last time. This is this time, but it was something that piqued my interest. Now, uh, how are we going to? Are, are we assured that the things that go into these new facilities are, are going to be um, compatible? Can you answer that? I, w I was not involved with the uh, operation of the pool uh, for the new senior center, but they had a very qualified uh, pool person to do the uh, drawings and so forth for the pool. Uh, I don't know if Commissioner Mitchell has any more information on that, but uh, I know it was a good company that designed the new senior center pool. All right, all right, so, so let, let, let that lay there. So then I'm gonna come back to, so the new boiler, um, I'm gonna come back to energy savings. Uh, the Board of Commissioners set out um, uh, to engage, looking at roughly what a half million square feet of all of our properties across um, our footprint, in which we replaced lights, we replaced um, bathroom fixtures. Uh, we, it wasn't every project, it wasn't every building, it wasn't every facility, but it was selective. And the intent was that if we replaced them, that over time we'll get some type of cost savings. So I know that this is one thing that was, you know, collectively part of the bigger picture for energy savings. Guys, can y'all give me an update on um, the aquatic center's um, um, savings? And Gary, you and I have talked about this in time past, but I think it's still important one more time that sometimes it's not just about um, the direct investment, it's how we use our capital. Do we turn the lights off? Do we have energy efficient lighting? Do we better toilets? Can you speak to that, Gary, or usage of water and how we power things? Can you talk to that in the aquatic center, please? Well, I, I would have to get with Chad uh, Griffin, who is our aquatics coordinator. Yep. And uh, we can compare the electric bills and the water bills uh, for the last year uh, compared to uh, previous years yep. and see where we are on that. Uh, we did that with the lighting on the uh, some of the ball fields and had a considerable savings with the lights. So we will certainly do that with Aquatic Center as well. All right. So I'll tell you what, in my closing, if you can get that information to us, Madam Chair, I'll just take this into the Finance Committee because I do want to get an update on our energy savings. So Director Haldeman, if you're listening, we're just going to add that to our miscellaneous um, just to touch bases on what that will be. Uh, Madam Chair, are you comfortable with that approach? Uh-huh. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I yield the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you all. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, are you finished? I believe you. Well, um, I, I, I'll, I'll end with uh, the boiler that Vice Chair Robinson mentioned. I think, as stated earlier by uh, Director Gary Dukes, that these guys are, are the professionals. And I would think, based on the dates of the first boiler, based on today's date and timing, I think we're going to be in good hands. I think we'll be fine as far as that goes. But we'll definitely take a hard look at that, though, Gary. So let's make sure we don't sidestep that and miss the, the moment of uh, getting the, getting to make sure we get the right efficient boiler that will work with that particular pool for the Senior Citizen Center. Uh, but I think the timing that we're in versus the timing that we were in, I think we'll be fine on that note. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, Commissioner Carson had anything else to add to that Parks and Rec Committee 
uh, in reference to all of this. So I I'll yield at that point. So. Oh, thank you. Commissioner Carthen, you have anything regarding parks and recreation you would like to add? No, just um, great to see how committees really do work. Um, in this instance, it really, really worked to save the taxpayers' money. We were able to go back and get a bid that was lower than uh, what we originally thought, uh, like Mr. Duke said, and it saved uh, us over $2,000. Uh, same equipment that we put at the Boundary Waters um, facility. Um, so always, it's, it's good to see that committees work together. We do try to make sure that we uh, use the taxpayers' money wisely so that we can get what's needed, but also get it um, in cost effectively. So thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Director Dukes, and thank you, Board of Commissioners. We're going to move on to tab number 11, authorization to award an on-demand professional consultant services contracts to the firms of Atkins, Atlas, Michael, Michael Baker, International, Afrit, Manish and Company, AECOM, Pond and Company, RS and H Incorporation, SEI Incorporation, VM Consulting Engineers, GCA um, and KCI and BM and K Croy Engineering and GPI Geo uh, Special Pursuant to RFQ 19 017, as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentine. Again. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, I'll try to frame this item in terms of uh, the process that we went through to give it some context. The, uh, every time that uh, the county uses uh, federal funds on a transportation project, uh, we have to follow uh, the federal process for acquisition of those services. And what essentially that means is that we have to select consultants based on qualifications initially. And so uh, the pricing and the negotiation comes later in the process. So uh, the county advertised um, for services uh, for transportation in 11 different service areas with the goal of uh, being more efficient in terms of how we procure the services whenever projects come up. Uh, some of the projects may be uh, an intersection improvements, others could be um, widening of roads, uh, perhaps even a new section of roads somewhere. And there's also miscellaneous services that we may need from time to time, such as uh, inspection, uh, survey, uh, geotechnical work and the like. So we divided uh, the uh, service areas into 11 typical service areas that are used uh, in the industry. Uh, we advertised and uh, the, uh, the responses to the request for qualification was reviewed by an independent firm of uh, Goodwin Mills and Kaywood out of Atlanta. Uh, they took all of the responses and went through the typical process of vetting uh, the submittals. It was a two-phase submittal and uh, uh, after the initial phase, uh, the, the field was narrowed down to how many firms could move on to uh, phase two for each service area. Initially, there were, <clears throat> I believe, a total of 25 different firms uh, vying for these services, and it was narrowed down. And so the firms that are, that are listed on here are the ones that were vetted after the second phase. So, so the first phase... Uh, submittals were analyzed. Uh, they were invited to bid for this or vie for the second phase, uh, make a submittal for that. They did that. Uh, those responses were then reviewed again by the firm of Goodwin, Mills, and Kaywood. And they came back and presented the findings at the Transportation Committee and a recommendation from the committee uh, coming to the board is to award the contract to these uh, firms that are listed. Now, these firms, uh, these contracts are zero value. Essentially, they are getting the firms lined up on demand for whenever the county has needs related to 
uh, designed or inspection or testing, whatever it might be, um, there would be at least three different firms that are on standby uh, to provide those services. Uh, there, there is zero value that goes with, the, with this award. Uh, later on, as the needs arise, the county will define a scope of services for whatever the project might be. It could be, um, uh, again, a full intersection upgrade, or it could be sidewalk uh, construction design, and uh, then negotiate a price with one of those three firms, and we will alternate between the three. And depending if uh, we reach out to one of the firms in, in a particular area and their response time is not up to the county standards, they, they're busy with other projects, they cannot service our needs in a timely manner, then we would move on to another firm. Or if they're already doing work for us uh, on other contracts and they're tied up, then we could go to a different firm. So the goal here is to have the ability uh, to go to these firms as the needs arise and define a scope of services and come up with a fee uh, schedule for those services by way of a task order. All of those awards would come back to the board uh, for action. So there is nothing, no work that would take place as a result of awarding these contracts. It just merely uh, facilitates, it, instead of having to advertise and be, uh, 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 go through the process of analyzing uh, the responses and vetting the responses each and every time we have a project, whether it be major or minor, this allows us to call upon um, a vendor that's already under contract and negotiate with them and, and not have to advertise uh, a process that usually would take a couple of months at least to go through. So it's an efficiency um, improvement for us to be able to do this. Um, again, um, the process follows the federal guidelines so that any projects that have federal funds in them, uh, we would still be able to use these services and, and meet uh, the federal criteria. Uh, so with that, uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Okay, thank you so much, Director Ballantine. Board of Commissioners, any questions for Director Ballantine? All right, Vice Chairman Robinson, Commissioner Robinson. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. No, no, we're good. Uh, again, this is an important project. Um, we have, we put, a, this actually is the results of perhaps two committees. Um, obviously, the Transportation Committee, but also uh, Madam Carthen um, uh, being the chairman of procurement. So as two chairmen, we came together to really, really look at this. We spent a lot of money in transportation and in, in, in an environment that we believe that should be uh, moved toward a, a direction of inclusion. We wanted to make sure that everybody had an equal opportunity. And so we, we went back and forth with this process. We, it's important to acknowledge what we went through. It, it was, it was, we wanted to be subtle to say, okay, are we doing our best? Are, are, we, are, we, are we establishing familiarity? Are we just reinforcing the same old, same old? Or are we saying, hey, there's more people out there that can deliver? And so one of the things that and I want to highlight, and, and thank you, Miguel, for saying is that we did do a third-party evaluation to, to uh, minimize bias that may go into just by default. If I'm evaluating a, a set of things, it's going to lean like it's going to lean. If, if, if a staff member is looking at it, they're going to lean like they lean, right? So let's just be honest. So what, what we tried to do is be very honest because what we've, what we've heard is that Douglas County was was, was closed uh, to business, that, that, that uh, when it comes down to key projects, there was just, you know, it's the same old, same old. And that, 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 that grieves me with so many people moving out here and, and so many people like, well, why can't they just come across the river and, and, and at least have an equal opportunity? So our process is determined whether or not people will actually consider us because they, they believe that our processes are, are flawed or that they're just, um, you know, these, these invisible rules and it's just sort of a head nod. I think that undermines the objective of being open for business. It's one thing to have a, a hashtag. It's another to actually uh, institutionalize that. So I, I, I appreciate um, the effort that this went through. So I said that as a backdrop. So Miguel, question for you. So these categories, 
just for the record, real quick, what are the, the nine or 10, because you, you sort of zoomed through the names, but what are the categories? Okay, there's 11 total categories, uh, minor road improvements, major road improvements, intersection improvements, bridge replacement and uh, new bridge uh, construction and improvement, survey services, traffic engineering, transportation planning, pedestrian and bikeway improvements, project contract administration, right-of-way acquisition, and miscellaneous. Miscellaneous would be things like cost estimates, uh, you know, things that are minor in nature. All right. So, so to that point, as uh, and you mentioned your opening statement was about federal contracts. So we did pass a, a policy about disadvantaged business enterprises at the, the fall of um, last year. How does this comport with that? Um, uh, when you went through the process of qualifying, did all these firms meet that criteria? Yes, the, the, the firms are obligated to, whenever they do any work, to make sure that they uh, meet a minimum of 15% DBE on each contract. So this one in particular, because, because there is no value to them, uh, we don't have a way to gauge where they are, uh, but they are obligated to, in the process of uh, buying for an actual task order with a dollar value, uh, meet the minimum 15 DBE requirement for the county. Got it. So they, they, they meet it. So uh, they meet the criteria. Are any of these um, companies um, DBEs? Are they themselves minority or disadvantaged? Are any Some are. Some of them are. I don't. Uh, I don't recall um, offhand uh, all. But for example, uh, um, Southeastern Engineering Incorporated is uh, a, a DBE firm, uh, local DBE firm. There's others in there as well. But yes, some of them are DBE themselves uh, or veteran-owned, and uh, uh, but they all have to comply with at least that minimum 15%. All right, I'm almost finished. Two more questions. So, so to that point, like, like um, David Good, our director of communication for the SPLOS, we recognize that we've gone through this process of, of the need to go deeper on our data. In other words, like, well, we think we know we have one firm. It's like, no, we need to know because you got to be able to track it now. We're bringing in a new set of firms. Now, we know how many are minority, and we've got to be able to track that over time. And what percentage of the dollars? I mean, we we. We, we can't be symbolic anymore. And so it's just a footnote. Um, you don't have to do anything with it right now, but we'll, we'll make sure we close that gap um, should the Board of Commissioners insist that that happen, uh, because that is important. It, we, we're, it's an atmosphere of inclusion. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And the last thing is that for this, are these um, are these firms guaranteed a contract for three years? I mean, talk to me about the duration in which they're on what's called the short list. In other words, I need the public to understand what we're about to do is you're going to lock out anybody else that would like to consider Douglas County for some period of time that Miguel Valentin, our director, is going to disclose to us. So that's the help me. Let's talk about that, Miguel. How, how do we? Yes, the the uh, initial contract is a, for a one year term and is subject to renewals uh, uh, up to another four years. So depending on depending on the county's uh, uh, you know, performance, uh, the, the vendor's performance, the the counter, the county's uh, uh, priorities, et cetera, uh, they can be renewed um, after one year uh, or not. Uh, the initial goal was to to carry us through the SPLOS cycle so that we had vendors um, at least for the duration of the SPLOS, but uh, there is no guaranteed work on these contracts and there is uh, no guaranteed duration uh, other than the initial one-year term. One year up to five years, but duly noted it was supposed to cover the SPLOS and that is admitted. So I just want to highlight those things. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm going to yield. Madam Carthen, perhaps you may want to weigh in from the procurement, but that was good enough. That's all I want to do with highlight, Madam Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Commissioner Carthen, do you have any comment uh, regarding the procurement side? I, I do, thank you, Chairman Jones. Um, mm -hmm. Director Valentine, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Commissioner? I'm good. So can you talk a little bit about 
why this is an easier approach as opposed to taking more time to go about advertising for these um, bids and for this scope of work and why it was important for us to get it right, to go back and, and get it right. And the second part of that is, can you talk to us about the difference between um, how many applied the first time and when we opened it back up, what we got the second time? Okay, I'd be happy to. Uh, yes, uh, from, from the standpoint of, of efficiency, uh, typically every time we have a new project, uh, we would have to put together a similar package just specific to that project and uh, get that advertised. And so uh, it would take typically no less than two months, could be as much as three months, to go through the process. And because we have so many different projects, and sometimes it's, it's not just an entire project, we may have a need to investigate a, a particular area uh, or to get a cost estimate so we can gauge how to proceed on, on a different uh, need, different uh, area, different project. Uh, this allows us to, to have somebody uh, that's been vetted, uh, that's been uh, gauged based on the federal process so that when we need to engage um, another consultant, another contractor, we do not run afoul of the federal regulations and we can do it much quicker. Uh, because we've already gone through that process. So that that answers uh, your your first question. Uh, and and uh, in terms of the the importance uh, going forward uh, to to uh, the transportation component and making sure that we are inclusive. and, and uh, again, every single uh, contract that is let, in the future by way of a task order on a, under these on-demand contracts will have to meet the minimum DBE criteria. So they, uh, all of the consultants uh, vying for this are aware that they must comply. And we will track that um, absolutely as we go forward. Um, did I answer your second question fully, Commissioner? Well, well so the first time we, we did this, we had uh, a, a certain a number of people who made it through. But the second time, I think it was it was a little bit more. Yes, that, that is correct. Uh, the, the, first, the first iteration of this, I, if memory serves me, we had about 18 respondents. Mm -hmm. The second time around, we had 25. So there were so there were more firms, a lot of the same firms, but then additional firms that were aware of what the county was trying to do, and and so they they uh, submitted responses to to be included in the process. Which is good because we know that the more people we have, um, the bigger the pool, the better the pricing may be because competition helps mm -hmm. us with pricing. So again, it goes back to making sure that we are handling the taxpayers' dollars and the, and the SPLOS dollars and all the other money that comes into the county that we're handling it and managing it properly and trying to get the most out of what we're given for the taxpayer. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I appreciate it. Even though it took us a little longer to do it, I appreciate the process and I appreciate how we got to where we are. And so I thank you for being so patient with us, especially me because I'm new to this, um, allowing me to see how the process worked and taking me through it. And uh, I think it I think it turned out great. And, I, and I'm looking forward to my sidewalks coming onto Chapel Hill. So I know this is part of that. So uh, uh, I look forward to that. Thank you so much, Miguel, for all you do. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. All right, thank you so much, uh, Director Valentin. All right, we're gonna move on, uh, Board Commissioners. We have tab number, well, tomorrow, tab number 12 is approval of expenses. Please be prepared to approve accordingly. And then uh, tab number 13 requires an executive session, which is Board Appointments to Board Assessors. Uh, Attorney Bernard, I believe you're on the line. Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, Madam Chair, we'll need executive session for personnel and litigation. Okay, thank you so much. All right, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. 
Uh, any discussion? Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second to go in this uh, executive session. Please indicate by stating your name and saying um, yes. Ramona Mitchell, Jackson. Mitchell. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Mitchell, Mitchell, yes. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Terenia Carthen, District 3, yes. Ann Jones Guider, District 4, yes. Okay, we have a unanimous uh, motion and the, the uh, a unanimous vote and the motion carries. So thank you so much. With that being said, uh, Attorney Bernard, um, Board of Commissioners, we, um, Mark, can you take it from here and tell us what we need to do next? Because I believe we have to cut our computers off and then come back on. Mark Till. Okay. Yes, yeah, so leave your computers on. Just log out of this meeting and keep your MS teams pull up, pulled up, and we'll invite everyone back. Okay, thank you so much. To a separate meeting, be a separate one. Okay, thank you. All right, Board of Commissioners, I'll see you momentarily. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, TJ and Board of Commissioners. Thank you so much for your uh, for our executive session. Uh, any other comments from the Board of Commissioners before I close out? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. I, I see Commissioner Guy, I mean, uh, Commissioner Carthen's eyes, and I heard your voice, Commissioner uh, Robinson, but I'm going to start with Commissioner Carthen since I can see her, and then I'll call on you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to say um, kudos and thank you to uh, the um, Sheriff's Department, First Baptist Church of Douglasville, and the um, Masonic Masons uh, for coming out to help with our uh, food drive through donation. Uh, we had people who were lined up at 6.30 to receive those donations, and we didn't start until, well, it was supposed to start at 11, but we started at 10.30 because we had so many cars. Thank you so much to all of those who came out to help and to assist our community uh, with the community food drive. Uh, again, it was a success. Um, and thank you to uh, my aide, um, Christy Walker. Um, she even um, got bags from the census committee and, um, and reminded people to please fill out their census forms. Uh, so I say to all the citizens, remember, um, you, we want you to be counted in Douglas. So please, if you have not, go to... Uh, census2020.gov and fill out your census information so that you can be counted in Douglas County. Um, and uh, just want to say again, thank you and kudos to everybody that helped to make that day a success. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, I heard your voice. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Likewise, I just want to double back. I think it's appropriate to give uh, um, thanks and congratulations to Tiffany Stewart Stanley, Director of External Affairs, um, who helped translate a vision I had regarding mental health. Uh, we had a five-year journey that was culminated last week, last Thursday, and we had eight panelists, um, Dr. Ray Lightford, um, the CEO of Correct Health, um, Dr. Musso from the jail. We had uh, Superior Court Judge um, uh, Cynthia Adams. We had Judge Harrison from the juvenile judge now. Uh, we had Dr. Todd, Pamela Thompson, um, Dr. Cannon from the school board, um, and of course, State Rep. Um, Kelly Alexander joined us. And it was a great conversation regarding mental health that, that acknowledges the fact that while we're, we're still backing up and washing up and we're trying to get our financial plans in order, uh, there are things going on in our household. There is a rise in domestic violence. There is uneasiness and unrestness within our teens. I mean, just all of this solitary confinement and this constraint. Uh, it is having an impact. And so um, we're, we're delighted about the tools that were provided. Uh, we appreciate the work that was done on that video, um, a very small trailer documentary. And I'm sure it was, it was just your staff rocked. And I want to thank them all for coming together and uh, making this event um, very successful for the people. I've got a lot of comments from it, but I could not have been done it uh, without, um, obviously, the commitment of your staff. And again, uh, uh, Rick, uh, Ray Lightford and specifically Rick Martin came um, to the task. Um, TJ and those guys did as well. So again, thank you, Madam Chair, for ensuring that event went off as part of your broader behavioral um, health initiative. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Any other questions? I mean, any other comments from the Board of Commissioners before I close out? All right, citizens of Douglas County and also to the Board of Commissioners, I hope and pray that everyone is staying safe during this COVID, uh, pan or should I say coronavirus pandemic. Um, I would like to say that this administration has certainly 
put some uh, resources into making sure that we reduce the transmission of COVID-19 in here in Douglas County. I would like to just uh, add that our uh, testing site is going quite well at Hunter Park, and we've had a significant amount of tests that come through, or uh, citizens who have, who have come through to be tested. And so that certainly is something that, that is helping. And then, of course, tracing will come later. And then, of course, uh, um, not only the tracing, then the treatment, and then from the treatment on to hopefully uh, one day very soon a vaccine. Uh, I would like to also just say as of last night at 7 p.m., we had 437 confirmed cases of positive uh, COVID-19 here in Douglas County, and we have 15 deaths in my heart and uh, heartfelt condolences go out to our families here and also to the citizens who are uh, deceased as a result of this uh, awful virus. Uh, I would like to also uh, commend our small businesses for taking extraordinary measures as this county uh, opened up under the governor's orders. We're certainly, I want to make sure that the citizens uh, know that we are uh, taking very street, uh, strategic, calculated, measured steps in opening up our county. And I would like to commend our small businesses who have complied so uh, grace uh, gracefully with upholding social distancing, uh, hand uh, hygiene, washing, and the disinfection of surfaces, and wearing masks under the circumstances when one is needed. Also, would like to uh, just say that I would, I'm going to ask our county administrator to just talk about what we're doing from the county government uh, perspective right now. Right now, the courts are still, they're not open as of now, but there are some things coming down the pike in the future. And however, uh, the, uh, the county government will continue to telecommute as we try to flatten the curve in uh, Georgia and also in Douglas County at large. That's very important. So we can telecommute. And then also we have a hodgepodge of not only telecommuting, but also uh, of shifts. And of course, our central workers are, or should I say employees, are required to report on a daily basis. Mark Till, if you could just talk about some things that we're, we're planning to do. And also, we are so excited about that the uh, Medline has given us quite a bit of, uh, uh, provided quite a uh, bit of PPEs here in Douglas County. Google has stepped to the, up to the plate and all our other industries have assisted during this uh, COVID-19. And we are so appreciative. Mark, could you just give the Board of Commissioners and the citizens a, an update on our plans for the courts? Courthouse. Yes, ma'am. Um, so Judge Emerson's issued a executive order. I sent that out to the board, um, I think, last week. Um, we're getting some signs made, making sure people, you know, if you have any the symptoms that you can't, you don't need to enter the courthouse. Uh, masks are required. I think for early voting, that may be different. Uh, Milton's Milton's checking into that with the uh, um, the state uh, elections, and then we'll talk to Judge Emerson about that. Uh, as far as building department, um, planning, zoning, uh, occupational tax, um, so they're all still open. Uh, buildings are as far as permits, uh, they're we're on track the same as we were last year. Um, so builders haven't stopped. Landfield is still open. Um, we've opened up the walking trails and uh, the disc golf courses. So pretty much that's where we're at right now. Thank you. Um, Vice Chairman Robson, I heard you first. Okay, real, real quick and I, without getting into this, but I, I'm gonna just focus on voting. Um, do not, and I heard the comment about do not enter if you have these symptoms. Uh, I have hay fever, I have allergy, I have um, similar symptoms as perhaps what's suggested. I want to be real careful that our citizens' rights are not violated uh, and that they're turned away. Uh, if I don't have a mask on and I do have the symptoms, uh, meaning I've got an allergy, how are we going to handle that? I, I want y'all to be very thoughtful how the enforcement of this, I, I get an executive order, but but that, uh, go back to right constitutional federal, like, no, how y'all gonna do that now? Do a lot to ensure that people still get to to vote if they came in. Now, most of this is going to be handled, obviously, uh, through absentee. I, I, I do understand that. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the smaller of the numbers. Majority of people are going to probably do absentee based on what I understand. So keep it there. In other words, we just talk about those few, but it's always those few that 
that get purged off or get denied um, for whatever reason. And I want to make sure I understand what we're saying is that even if I do sneeze, even if I don't have a mask, are you telling me I'm not going to be allowed to vote? Don't answer if you don't uh, answer. Don't, don't answer if you yep. don't know. Vice Chairman, I believe if, if Mark, if you would just allow him to restate what he said for the for the uh, Board of Elections component, he said that uh, that would be a different segment. Masks would not be required. Mark, would you chime in again? Because I believe I yes, that's speak. my understanding, and it's my understanding that we can't stop anybody from voting, right? And that is not our intent. So right. Milton is checking on. He's getting the uh, actual verbiage from the state. Um, just so we can run that by Judge Emerson and let him know. Now, and again, I separate that, um, so which brings up to another point, last point. All right, um, I get to, to, we have a general administration building and a courthouse in the same facility, All right? So there, there's, there's conflicting, right? You got dual orders, dual, dual issues here. Two separate things. I get to judge, but also get general government, right? And they, and they get to coexist. So I'm going to say, okay, I got that for this building. Is there any other more um, early voting precincts in the county, uh, which just probably is not an issue? So is there any, are we only early voting at the courthouse? Can somebody answer that? No, it's all the same locations We that early voting is open. All right. So 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 uh, so then this this is um, uh, that's not a judicial order, Madam Chair. So for the other facilities, uh, if, in fact, we had these type of um, symptoms, um, are we going to be allowed to vote? Yes, Commissioner, you will be allowed to vote. We're not uh, testing temperatures or anything at that uh, at these centers. Am I correct, Mark? I just want to make sure we're not doing any of that. Those centers are open for voting, and but we will, yes, however, disinfecting the machines each, between each uh, citizen to wipe each citizen's. I mean, each uh, machine and all the buttons down. That is uh, certainly part of, uh, uh, I believe, a high, uh, good hygiene and also infection control. So we want to make sure that our citizens are safe. Gotcha. That was all I was asking. Thank you, yeah. ma'am. That's correct. I want everybody to um, have the opportunity and the right to vote. All right. Uh, any other any other comments? Yeah, well, well, one, one final. Now, what about our seniors? I know they're um, they're still they're still um, at home and they're sheltering in place. But I know we talked about having the, the Woody Fight Senior Center as a voting precinct. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to push it one way or another. Uh, how will you handle that very vulnerable population if, in fact, there are some seniors that show up, they still, they're old school, I want to vote. Um, are we going to accommodate them? Um, is that going to be open? Because uh, this is the first yes. time we've ever done that one. So I'm asking uh, how are you going to handle that one. That's a special yes, one. Woody Fight uh, Voting Center. That precinct at Woody Fife is is open as most the citizens. Uh, I'm not sure if they are aware, but this is a new precinct and it's open specifically to allow our citizens to vote and have access and ease, so they will not have to stand in the long lines and things of that sort. So we wanted to make sure that we uh, pay our respect to our citizens to allow them to get in and out. And so yes, that precinct is open, which is Woody Fife. It will be open. Are you? Oh, okay. Um, any other comments from Board of Commissioners? And I heard, I believe, Commissioner Guider, did I hear you? I've heard yes. someone. Yes. Okay, Commissioner Guider. Okay. Uh, on the voting, there's also a drop box up there outside the courthouse, too. So they won't, uh, some people will not have to go in if they have their ballot already filled out. But I wanted Mark to comment on the tag office. I've had a lot of people say, when are they going to open? So could you... Uh, comment on that, please. Yes, ma'am. So it's my understanding that the tax commissioner is opening up the tax and tag office as soon as he gets the, uh, um, the clear dividers um, between the public and, and his employees. But do you, you, don't have, you don't have a date? Um, everybody's asking. No, ma'am. <laughs> I do not have a date. All right. Commissioner Guider, what we'll do, we'll get a date and we'll publicize that. We'll uh, get in touch with the uh, tax commissioner, Mark, if you could just contact him or either I'll call him and just get a date, firm date. I know we, he was ordering the plexiglass for his staff's protection, and that hopefully won't take that long to be installed. So we will get that out. And I'll have Rick, Rick to run a, a press release so, yeah. the staff, uh, so our citizens will know exactly when, when it's opening, Commissioner Guider. And I also, the, I think I heard the comment say that 
the where the courts are closed, but uh, not all of them. But they also uh, Tammy Howard's office has been open the whole time, and so has the probate office. And I don't know which other, but uh, you can still file papers or get get documents and everything from her office. So um, I don't know about the courts. I thought they were having non-jury court uh, so that they didn't get such a backlog. And I know arraignment and things like that had to be uh, maybe through the computer or the television. So with that, I yield back. Okay, thank you. You're, you're so correct, Commissioner Guided, according to uh, our state judge, uh, Melton, Judge Melton, and under the uh, direction of uh, Judge Emerson, the courts have never closed, the <laughs> remain open. It's just that the jurors, the amount of jurors that we have on Tuesdays and Mondays, or should I say Mondays and Tuesdays, have not uh, been coming to the courthouse. And those that should uh, hopefully within the near future that we will uh, jumpstart that process again. But however, at that point, that's when we say that our jurors will, will be required to wear a mask. And we'll have all those supplies that uh, the mask will have all the uh, PPEs, or should I say personal protective equipment available to our citizens when they arrive at the courthouse. So um, right now, we just plan it by year and, and working with Judge Emerson. And as we hear more, I certainly will be able to uh, provide that information to the public. All right, if there's nothing else to come before this Board of Commissioners, Board of Commissioners, thank you so much. And citizens of Douglas County, thank you so much. And at this point, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.